of, of, of Acts. That means the Acts of the Apostles. The Acts of Apostles, chapter 2. Now on the day of Pentecost, we know the Holy Spirit has been poured out. In verse 14, then Peter stood up with the eleven, raised his voice, and addressed the crowd. Fellow Jews and all of you who live in Jerusalem. Listen to what he says. Fellow Jews and all of you who live in Jerusalem. Say, non-Jewish people as well. Let me explain this to you. Listen carefully to what I say. These men are not drunk as you suppose. It's only nine in the morning. No, this is what was spoken by the prophet Joel. In the last days, says the Lord, I will pour out my spirit on all people. Say, in the last days, he will pour out his spirit on all people. Say again, on all people. Say, Trigonistu, no one is too good. No one is too bad. And no one is too average to be saved. Give God a hand. Say, pouring out His Spirit on all people. No one is too good, and no one is too bad, and no one is too average to be saved. Everyone who calls upon the name of the Lord will be saved. In the last days, I will not only pour out my Spirit on the Jewish nation, or the prophets, but on all flesh. Give God a hand. Hallelujah. He was raising his voice and said, listen careful to what I say to you. You need to take, take, give your attention. Say to God, is to listen very careful. This is important. I mean, listen to these words. He's speaking right to you. Jesus is speaking right to you. Now, do you think it was Peter that stood really up? It was the Holy Spirit through Uncle Peter. I mean, hallelujah. He says, then Peter stood up with the eleven raised his voice and addressed the crowd. Fellow Jews and, and all of you who live in Jerusalem, let me explain this to you. Listen carefully to what I say. Say to the to listen carefully to what the Holy Spirit is saying. When the Holy Spirit speaks, you always need to listen carefully. If you do not listen carefully, you're going to miss the point. I promise you. If you sit in a church meeting and you listen with half an ear, you're going to miss what God is saying to you. Hallelujah. These men are not drunk as you suppose, because many people come to this church and think these people are crazy and drunk. It's only nine in the morning. No, this is what the prophet Joel was speaking about. He said, in the last days, God says, I will pour out my spirit on all people. Say, on all people. Your sons and your daughters will prophesy. That doesn't make your sons and daughters prophets. They will prophesy. I mean, say they will prophesy. Hallelujah. In the last days, God says, I will pour out my spirit on all people. Your sons and your daughters will prophesy. Your young men will see visions. Your old men will dream dreams. Who's those people who are dreaming dreams among us? Who's the, who the men who dream dreams? I want, to, I want to see your age. Your sons and daughters will prophesy. Your young men will see visions. Your old men will dream dreams. Even on my servants, both men and women, I will pour out my spirit in those days. And they will prophesy. I will show wonders in the heaven above, signs on the earth below, blood and fire, billows of smoke. The sun will be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the coming of the great and glorious day of the Lord. And in everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. I mean, what is true salvation? Salvation is not giving your heart to the Lord only. But true salvation is to save you. Salvation begins with your spirit. The second step of salvation is your soul. And most Christians is slow to in learning. The Bible speaks about it. By now you should have been teachers yourself, but you are slow in learning. I tell you, Christians are slow in learning. Sometimes that makes a pastor tired. When, a, when people should have been preaching already, but they still do not know the basic principles of the word. Say to God, to don't be slow. But have a teachable spirit. Now this is man's choice. 
for me, I tell you and I tell you again, that your, your spirit is the holy of holies where God ministered to the rest of your being. The first one getting saved is your spirit. And as your spirit matured and grow in stature and in wisdom, your spirit is now able to minister to your soul and get your soul saved. Because many as you sit here, your souls are merely saved. Because you cannot control your mind. And that is a, a task that the Lord is walking with us as we go on. And, and, and eventually our bodies also submit to our spirits. Through whom the Holy Spirit is working. Amen. God is interested in saving you spirit, soul, and body. Hallelujah. Why all this pity that we go through? Why all this trouble to get our souls saved? Because what you are here on earth, you will be forever. Hallelujah. That's why we say, I must decrease and the Lord must increase. The amount of Jesus I've got in my life is very, very important. To that amount, he can use me on the earth. And to that amount of Jesus that is formed in my character, he, to that amount, he can use me. And to that agree, degree, he owe my soul. Amen. Ask the guy next to you, how much of your soul does Jesus owe? Don't, don't say all easily. Because many people say all, but you sit and discuss with them, you realize, but this man's soul is only halfway saved. The rest still belong to the devil or the flesh. And that part of your flesh that still belongs to the devil is the, is the platform from where the devil will, this, will plan his future destruction into your life. You should stop that. Pray with me, Lord God. I must decrease, and you must increase, even the more, in the name of Jesus. I must decrease, and you must increase, every day more and more, in the name of Jesus Christ. You cannot believe how your background is shaping you, and keep a hold on you if you are not in step with the Spirit, and does not allow the Spirit to teach you. Do not rely on your own understanding. Because if you rely on your own understanding, your background is going to rule your life. If I had to rely on my background, my background will hold me exactly where I am, in bondage to the present now. I will not be able to go into the future. When I... When I rely on my own understanding, my background keeps me in prison, in the past. And my present is even not a reality. And my future, I will never get there. Hallelujah. Say, say pray, Lord Jesus. Release me from my past. Release me from my past experiences. I will not rely on these. I will not trust in these. I will not rely on my own understanding. But I will trust in the Holy Spirit to lead me on. To lead me on. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. The way that you've been brought up, you can be captivated by this. And it can become your prison. Keeping you from entering living in the present and keeping you from going on in Jesus. Hallelujah. Satan, you should always be ready to learn from the Holy Spirit. 